what's going on beautiful people out there it's your boy crypto wolf and we're starting off with a kind of a new series where we're going to be doing some breakdowns on trading view itself and the various menus tools what stuff is where it goes all that good stuff and so i'm going to do this in separate pieces just to keep the video short and today we're going to be looking at the top menu that menu strip menu bar going across the top this guy up here now i uh, enlarged everything a little bit so if you're on mobile hopefully you could see it i'm definitely going to be you know reading it and explaining as we go along here but we are talking about this menu strip up here where all the time frames are and your your pairing and asset all that stuff what was it symbol search and i'll have another separate video for the actual chart panel itself uh, another one for this toolbar over here on the side. Another one where we get into the sidebar and all these various options right here. That will probably be a little bit longer one. And we're going to have one for the bottom, which I imagine that will be short. But let's get into it with the top menu bar. So first up here, you will see the symbol at the moment. I happen to have it on Bitcoin USD Tether. If you click on that brings up the symbol search box and you can type in whatever you want say we're doing shout out to phantom over here you do phantom you can do usdt if uh, whatever exchange you're on uh, is you know trading in tether or usdc if somebody's got it somewhere <clears throat> or you can just do a regular usd you know dollar amount and then over here, you're going to have the different exchanges. If you are trading on a specific exchange, whether it be Binance or Bybit, any of them really. <clears throat> and you can see TradingView does a really good job about getting as many as they can. And you'll also find some of these other ones where, uh, you know, premium index, open interest. Some of these can be interesting if you're really digging into a specific asset. Particularly, it would probably be, you know, Bitcoin itself. And you'll also get other pairs. I, I doubt there's too many with Phantom. But let's say we go back to Bitcoin. You know, you'll start getting like, uh, you know, Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Bitcoin US, uh, BUSD. Long shorts, open interest. <clears throat> uh, what have we got? The 3X weighted perpetual futures which again your perpetual contracts if you're over on bybit you know you may want to have this one listed in your watch list because you know sometimes you get differences between the exchanges uh you know especially when you get real big pushes or spikes i mean there was the one case where it was like binance.us went all the way down to some insanely low price and especially on an exchange where you don't have a lot of a liquidity you'll get some crazy shit like that but that's what that is you can type in whatever you want and of course it works for everything else forex futures stocks you could do indices you know bonds <clears throat> i haven't played around too much with the economy one could be interesting s and p's yeah basically what i would expect to see a lot of the major indicators money index the m2 yeah, we don't even want to look at that. We all know what's up with that. The M1. We want to talk about a hockey stick graph. Shit. But moving on here. Sorry, we're just leaving on this for a moment. Now you have this big old long list of time frames. If you haven't set this up yet, you're not going to have a whole buttload of these up here. You'll probably just have some basics. Maybe you got the one minute, the five minute, 10, 15, 30 hour probably a four hour i think daily and the way you add those is by clicking these stars over here which adds it to your favorite list anytime you see one of these stars with any menu anywhere again add and remove to favorites in this case especially if you are doing a lot of trading specifically like scalping and short-term ones you know you want to have the shorter time frames yeah, that you know they all kind of have their use even if it's just flipping through them like one at a time usually starting from a higher down to a lower 
you get the bigger picture and then you start zooming in on a little picture you start looking for uh, like confirmations and correlations between different time frames that back up whatever uh, premise you happen to be thinking at the time and you scroll down here you got your hourlies your dailies these ranges really i don't know they're of no use to me to be honest with you um basically it changes the candles to the range style candle and it it's just weird I don't know. i'll leave it at that play with it if you want but odds are you're probably not going to come back to it and then of course down here at the bottom you can add in your custom time frames so over here you know one two three five days well maybe you want four days come in here four change this guy to days hit add it'll pop it in there on the list for you you can hit the favorite and it'll show up on your uh nice little menagerie of time frames up here and again i have this zoomed in little trick if you hold control scroll the mouse wheel up and down it'll make stuff bigger and smaller so that's the time frames over here we have the the candle style so i think in, initially it only has this regular candle and then your drop down arrow arrow i added the Heikinashi, and those are really the only two that i use <clears throat> typically the only two i see anybody else even using but you come over here you could switch it up to the bars which is pretty close to what that range ends up looking like uh your regular candles just straight up price action bodies and wicks hollow candles exact same thing except instead of the the greens being filled in or i believe you can swap it to do it the other way and customize things you can change the colors all that good stuff a line which you know if you're looking on like coin market cap or uh td ameritrade any of these things usually they're just you know they'll have your little line graph that's just showing a general direction really i mean you're not digging into the weeds too much on just a simple line graph area same thing but with a a nice little fancy gradient below it baseline as you'll see we have this little dotted line above it the line is green with some shading below it the area is red and when you move this you can see we get more green we get more red and that's basically what that is i don't know how much i would use this i suppose if you were giving yourself like a i don't know a fair value price and you wanted to set it there and then you had above below whatever whatever floats your boat obviously Heikinashi, if you've been watching my channel at all you'll know this is primarily what i leave mine on i like it it's essentially an average which gives you these nice you know smooth you know green to red to green to red a little bit of choppiness there when you get them small candles but it's definitely nicer to look at and it gives you a quicker visualization of the trend going on it can be a little funky if you are like entering or closing a trade or you are you know say trying to set some kind of running stop loss behind it or anything where you're really like getting into okay i want to watch like on the one minute see what it's doing like it's getting close maybe you're you know you're uh you're spiking up and you're just keep moving that stop loss off and uh, stop loss up and chasing it up or something <clears throat> then in that case regular candles might be a little bit better for that specific task uh, then you get into these weird japanese ones you get the renko filter out the noise with japanese charts get this guy here in fact forgot that was even there now with these ones it's going to skip you right to the daily chart and as you can see it's basically like your eight 
bit clunky Atari looking chart. It's got your little, it's your Minecraft Bitcoin chart. Honestly, I, I, I see what they're saying about simplifying, but that is of no use in trading. Not to me, at least. Come over here to the line break. And it's almost like a combination of the Renko and the Heikinashi. Again, stuck on the daily. Try to go to the 30 minute. Snaps you right back. Kagi. Interesting looking. I'll give it that. It is very interesting looking. It's really not of any use that I'm looking for. <clears throat> kind of interesting to see Mark Cipher down here actually working on these things. Which reminds me, I'm going to make this full screen because we're not really talking about that today. Point and figure, this is just, just weird. It's just weird. Look at that. What the hell are you supposed to get from that? I honestly do not know. I guess if you're... It says daily chart, but if you look, we're going 24 March... 11 April, 21 April, 30 April. So it's going like weekly, really. And yeah, just, I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just leave that there. And kind of like I was talking about before, this is range candles. I don't even know if I would call it candles. Um, as far as the time frame, I mean, this guy is cruising. It's cruising. What do we got here? And we're talking seconds, it looks like. And I believe it's like high and low range. If it's red, it went down from there to there. Green, it went up from there to there. All right, I don't know. The time frame on this is totally friggin' erratic. So I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. So I'm going back to my cozy little Heikinashis over here shoot back actually let's see what's going on at the moment sideways sitting sideways all right so those are your candles and just like everything else you can hit the favorites and they will stay pinned up there unfortunately when you start clicking around on other ones it adds them up here until you refresh the page I don't want that nonsense. Oh, fuck. Okay, so I just shot back to that. Come on now. Come on. Save layout. There we go. There we go. All right. Moving on, we have compare or add symbols. So, with this, you can. That's an odd selection, but okay. You can pick some other asset. In this case, let's do uh, let's do this. Let's compare it. S and P five hundred up on the daily. Now there are a few different ways of doing this. As you can see, okay, you know it's kind of following. It's kind of following. Bitcoin going up. S&P just slowly rolling up the hill. Just rolling us. It's, it's got its walker. It's making its way up there. As it's, it's doing the walk around the mall. Meanwhile, Bitcoin's over here. Drag racing, crashing, drag racing, crashing. I'm just kidding. It hasn't crashed yet. Down here is crashing. Knock on wood. So yeah, so that is the just kind of like default of it. Now, you can do same percentage scale, new price scale, or new pain. New pain just throws it down here in a new pain. Go figure. New price scale is a little bit more useful. And as you can see... 
you have your US dollar price scale over here for your S&P. You have your US dollar tether price scale for your Bitcoin. Now obviously it kind of it overlays them but it doesn't track if you will. So we are on oh and it changes it to linear important details. So if you were like trying to match up maybe like the COVID dip over here Let's say that kind, of, that kind of jives a little bit. You can see right there some massive divergence between the S&P and Bitcoin. Yeah, but all right, I'm not getting into that too much. Get rid of that. So that is the compare. Now, you know, typically in your mind when you're thinking about comparing to, especially like two types of crypto, let me get this back to normal here. If you're thinking of comparing two types of crypto, I'll come over to this one here in a minute. We got select layout. This is nicer where you can actually see them side by side. And there's some cool features with that too. But moving on, we have the indicators, metrics, and strategies. Oh, and whenever you see, I can't move the mouse to circle it, but whenever you see those little orange boxes with a, uh, a key symbol in it, that's your shortcut key. So in this case, if you were to hit the forward slash, same thing pops up with the indicator uh, pop-up menu here. Favorites, like everything else, you can mark you know, things as favorites just to have it on a quick list like this, or you can search. Now, if you are a Market Cipher subscriber, you will find it down here in the invite only scripts. And these are going to be ones that obviously are private, <clears throat> usually that you have to pay for. And you could turn them on from here. You can add them to the favorites list. And when you first buy Market Cipher, this is where you will be turning them on at. But coming back up here, let's see what do we got. Hit up technicals. And obviously, TradingView has just a massive list of indicators you can use whether it be your regular old volume uh what do we got volume weighted average price vwap auto anchored yeah we got some other common ones in here volatility index price volume trend your moving averages is this one that i remember Okay, this one was kind of interesting. You basically kind of had like a, a MACD with the uh, RSIs, it looks like. MACD, all right. And I'm going to do some videos on indicators another time and get into some of the, the primary ones that most people use. And then maybe from there, we'll just start randomly trying, clicking on stuff and see what it looks like, how it works, what it does. But... Just since I got it open here, that's your, your MACD indicator. Looks somewhat like what you would see in Market Cipher, but obviously not as good. But it can be useful, especially if you don't have Market Cipher or you can't afford it. I mean, shoot, I was using that stuff before and uh, so was everybody else. So that's your indicator list. Click on the little sidebar, it'll pull up all your favorites. EMA ribbons, stochastic RSI, some other ones I was playing around with. I haven't actually checked that in a while. Once you get Market Cipher, man, you really just, not that you become dependent on ah, shit. Yeah, you become dependent on it, but you, you start to see the need to not use other stuff because at a certain point, the more you have on here, I mean, if you had 10 indicators going all at the same time, it's just overload you're you're gonna find everything conflicting and it's gonna throw you off your game all right keep it simple stupid all right so next we have indicator templates probably not of use to most um fairly self-explanatory emas moving average oscillator swing trading volume based but this guy right here well, let me show the little tool tip. 
create alert. I got a video coming on this one pretty soon, specifically related to Market Cipher, doing Market Cipher alerts. But if you don't know what it's going to do, you're going to set a condition and say when an indicator reaches a certain point or the price does something specific, it will pop up a little message. Matter of fact, I think I had one pop up in a previous video. A pop up little message. You can have it say whatever you want, give it a name, and you know, tell it how often, you know, only once, once per bar, blah, blah, blah. And it'll pop up a little message saying, in my case, it was, uh, you know, VWAP cross zero to the upside on the 10 minute, I think it was, on Bitcoin. And you can set it for a specific time frame, all that good stuff. So, yeah, check out that video when we get around to doing it. Uh, this guy here is interesting, and this is great for practice. This is bar replay. And basically, this is your DeLorean this is your time machine. Just click this little guy here and Doc Brown's going to take you for a ride. But one thing to keep in mind, if you get this little message, click this guy and it will say, we currently do not support the playback of spreads, non-traditional chart types, including Heikinashi. Hey, look, hey, see, there you go. That's the alert. That's what pops up. Almost perfect timing. Almost. But yeah, if you're on Heikinashi candles, it will not do it because of the fact that it is averaged from past candles. So what you need to do, come back to our candle chooser, click the regular ones, and there we go. You get this little, this little controller over here. Jump to, you could go to a specific time, unfortunately only in the chart. Be nice if we could do it in real life. You get your speed here. Or I think do I got yeah, okay. So you click that guy. It'll automatically be clicked, I think, when you originally press it, but and then you just click on the chart and look, everything, everything beyond disappeared. The cool part is you actually still have, you know, whatever trend lines and all that stuff you drew. So it's interesting to see how things filled in too. But play, forward, to real time, close it, hit it. And as you can see, speed it up a little more even. And if you're wondering why would I want to do this, like go relive history, what you can do, say you come to a point and you pause it, and you want to practice your strategy. You can look at this, you know, look at the charts, whatever, you know, Mark Cipher or not, and think, all right, if this is the chart right now, what would I do? You know, what am I seeing? What are, you know, obviously we got RSIs coming down to the bottom big time. They're fairly tight together. Looks like we did have that sharp little point right there. Go watch the RSI video. I talk about that a little bit. We were hanging out up here for a while, looking bullish, looking bullish. Again, we're on the daily chart right now. <coughs> so keep that in mind. I think we all know what happened from this point, but pretend you didn't. And you're seeing what's going on with the momentum waves. VWAP just curved up, money flow coming down. You might be thinking, nah, we're probably going to stay down for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Speed this up. Sideways, sideways, a little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit down. Yep, coming back up. Pause, go back and look, and uh, yeah. Money flow stayed in the red for a little bit. We were still coming down. Did have a little bit of bullish divergence right here. Kind of lended us to this little bit of an upswing, but generally speaking, still came down. Three yellow X's, one shy. And yeah, so it's helpful. It's nice for practicing because, you know, if you're just going back here and looking at the chart and saying like, okay, I see this going on. You know, I see the money flow coming down and you try in your mind just to say, okay, I'm going to cut it off at this point. It's still hard to 100% do that because you can still see all this. 
you know where it's going. So it's easy to say, oh, okay, you know, I would have went long right here. Right, right there at that, uh, that perfect little spot right there at the bottom. And I probably would have closed it right here at this perfect little spot at the top. But the reality is, you know, when you're in the moment and you don't have all that stuff, you really got to, uh, you really got to read it. You got to read your environment, look at the various different indicators, try to find some, uh, confirmations maybe between different time frames. all that stuff that goes into reading the charts, doing the technical analysis. Yes, I do. Yeah, just like right here where we're at right at this moment. You're looking at this and you're thinking, uh, you know, daily. Money flow's kind of coming up a little bit. We did have a little bit of a swing here. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, VWAP coming down that we swing back down a little bit. Ideally, hopefully we see a higher low, but... We'll see how it goes. Moving on. Just undo, redo. Same as always. You can also do control Z. And uh, man, I, I don't know if it has a shortcut for redo. Now to the select layout. This one's kind of cool. These are all these will all be chart panels just like this. So let's say we do some horizontals. Boom. And why it gave me shib, I have no idea. Same thing, get market cipher. Now, obviously, when you're doing this, whatever indicators you have down here are getting squeezed. And you can see here how you can move them independently. Or, 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 or. Check these out. Got a little tool tip and it tells you. Interval changes on all charts of the layout simultaneously. And this is your sync. So it's going to, you can sync different things. So let's turn the time on. Oh, no, that's not the one I was thinking. No, that is not the one I was thinking. Okay, I don't know why it seems like it's not updating. Maybe I gotta re open this. Uh, 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 uh. Hmm, yeah, that's the question. How the hell do you close it? I'll do this. We'll go back here. Okay, well, basically, I know there's an option in there somewhere where when you move it, both of them move at the exact same time i'll look into that one later but obviously you can uh get a little crazy with it you're going to need a bigger monitor that's two charts per tab limit but upgraded plans let you see to eight link charts perfectly synced all in the same window okay so apparently i can't go beyond two kind of a bummer but you get the point. And this little menu here, save all charts for symbols and intervals on layout. So obviously, whenever you're drawing some trend lines, what have you, and you exit out of it, and then you come back, they're saved in there. Well, obviously, everything's saved on the cloud. So this guy is like a real quick, you know, control S. It's your save. You know, you can also come up here save layout turn your auto save on and off again auto save on and off save now sharing you can rename this um layout you can make a copy of it you can do a new chart layout you can load one that's basically your chart layout menu and you will see this guy right here, these little bars kind of go back and forth like they're loading or something. That's when it's the auto saves working. So if you draw something real quick and then you, you know, close this tab on your browser or something, it won't get saved. 
if you go to like move to a different page, it'll give you a little warning saying, you know, uh, whatever it hasn't been saved yet. Do you want to the blah, 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 blah. Now, then you got your little cog wheel. Everybody calls it a cog wheel. It's a friggin' gear. I don't care what they say. That's a gear chart properties. You know, your basic stuff. I'll get into this a little bit more when we do the video on the actual chart panel. You can also get to it by right clicking in the chart full screen mode self-explanatory escape to exit take a snapshot yeah you could do it is it super useful eh, i don't know if you have windows 10 and it's not like the industrial type version if you hold shift the windows key and s you don't have to hold S, but hit S. That's your snippet tool. And you can basically take cropped snapshots. It is particularly useful if you have multiple monitors, because I don't know if you've ever done a screenshot with multiple monitors, and then you go and paste it into Photoshop or whatever. And it is literally like both screens or all the screens. I haven't actually tried it since I got four monitors, but I imagine it'd be friggin' giant hot mess, like four different screens in one image. So that snippet tool is super useful. So I, I never really use this. Then you got the publish where you can share it with, you know, the trading view community and, uh, you know, you can write up, uh, some of those idea article type things, but that is the top menu. I doubt anybody have any questions. It's pretty straightforward. But if you do or there's something you want to dig into a little deeper, again, like I said, I'm going to do a video specifically on it. I'll probably do numerous videos on indicators because after we get through the basic ones, we're just going to start random clicking. We're going to do some exploring, get our little door of the Explorer on with the, the indicators and then the alerts. We're going to do a video on. Remember that replay is a cool little tool especially you know even if you yourself are making videos and say you were doing a trade and you want to go back and kind of show what you did in the trade kind of quote unquote live time you can use that guy to explain it to people or like actually show them rather than being like yeah i entered down here and i exited up here because i knew all this is gonna happen because my crystal ball is fucking beast i don't know maybe it is if so, I mean, hey, send me a link. I like crystal balls. That sounded bad. All right. Well, everybody, have a fantastic day, evening, morning, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Shout out to the people watching over in Poland and Turkey. It's kind of cool to see that. So thank you. And uh, stay free. Stay frosty. Peace.